here's how it uh, we'll talk about you know dashboard design principles maybe comment on Stephen Pugh what he would say about some of these things uh, and talk about what we might do to make over some of these sad sad uh, looking dashboards. Uh, Stephen Few could not be with us tonight, but um, he had some interesting things to say on what a good dashboard is, which I thought I should uh, I should recap for our audience. Dashboard being, of course, a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one or more objectives consolidated and arranged on a single screen. Keeping this in mind, I, I think I think the important part of the definition is you know visual display. Um, important information needed to achieve one or more objectives. So I think that is the, uh, you know, something to keep in mind as we look at the next slides here and, and decide whether the designer um, knew what they were doing or not. All right, so one thing we cannot get away from is color schemes when it comes to dashboard design, right? Everybody has something to say about colors. So, um, Minda, <laughs> what would your advice be to the person who obviously really enjoys as many colors as possible on, on, on a dashboard. What would you say to this person if they came to you and said, we'd like your expert advice on this dashboard? Less, I'd say less is more. <laughs> yes. I mean, exactly. I don't know how you could talk to this person without hurting their feelings, but yeah, right. it's, it, I, when I see stuff like this, I usually say, you try and use color to create associations between the different pieces of information. I think that's the um, nicest way of saying there's way too much in there. Right, right. So to me, this is the person who uh, who paints the outside of their house purple. Right. <laughs> hey guys, purple, I made this. No. A purple <laughs> fence, everything. It's all purple. Uh, there's nothing you can do for these people. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one is a little unfortunate. So uh, obviously, you know, sometimes people are going to have absolutely no aesthetic whatsoever. So maybe, maybe the advice is let's pick your fav one or two of your favorite colors on this slide, and then we'll we'll kind of work within those palettes. I think, um, Minda, you 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 may agree, but Microsoft has done a better job of the color palettes in in more recent versions of Office, right? I mean, this is what yeah. the colors used to be, right? And so now we kind of, um, we have those color palettes at our fingertips. We don't all need to be um, graphic designers in order to make a decent looking dashboard. So that that would be yeah. my my takeaway for this slide. So anyway, I um, got that one from contextures.com. Um, Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, now this one we, we, we talked about with Mike Alexander. Uh, what do you think about this as a depiction of events supposedly somehow related to the space race? What would you tell the designer of this particular dashboard? I'd ask them what was the message they're trying to convey? <laughs> Try right. and turn around because I don't know where to look aside from turning my head on the side. Um, it's just too much information, it's too busy. And, and that's one of the things I teach in my course, like before you start building anything, what question are you trying to answer or questions are you trying to answer with this dashboard? And, and that tends to focus people's attention to um, and help them narrow the content down. But yeah, that's a bit mad. Right. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think that and I know that this really is a terrible chart dashboard, but the lesson here to me is that, um, you know, people want to put all the information on there because they think, well, just put everything on there and let the let the user decide and let the, the viewer decide as if they were, like, reading tea leaves. But I think that you should build with intention. So I think right. there's something, you know, connect the messages, uh, as um, Minda was saying. Right. Yeah, for me, I, I, the, the more I look at the dashboard, the more confused I am. <laughs> and you wouldn't think that upon looking at this. You think, okay, well, I'm just going to read some and I'll figure it right. out. And the more I read, the more I'm confused. Just, just, right. the, just even at the title, the space race up at the top. 1957 <laughs> is Russia and 75 is America, but right. the, the the red line goes on longer. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just I'm just more confused. You know, the right. the, the the further I dig into this, so it's rough. Right. This could probably be broken up into many different 
dashboards. All right, so, so far this one is O for O. All right, so let's take a look at some other data viz crimes, like for example, this. <laughs> they, um, but what, what do you think about this, Minda? Um, I don't know, what would you do to make this a better data visualization? Yeah, I think that the infographics seem to be really popular at the moment, and mm -hmm. the argument that I've heard is that oh, we need to make it look interesting so people read it. Um, right. And I, I get that, but I don't even know what it's telling me. Um, and maybe just a nice bar chart would do. <laughs> right. Do you think the you infographics is a, is, is a trend or um, that, will, that will go off into who knows where along with 3D uh, pie charts or what, <laughs> what are your thoughts on? You know, well, I don't know that they'll go away. I just hope that they'll become some standards, you know, like we've had for dashboards and that there'll be some design principles people can follow because at the moment it just seems to be like grab some random images that are slightly related to the topic and make them look colorful and pretty and hopefully people will read it. Um, right. Some are done really well and um, most, most of them aren't. But, um, right. Yeah. Yes, dashboards like fame have become have become cheap. All right. Um, <laughs> so, what are what are your thoughts on this one? First of all, um, it, it's it's a donut chart supposedly, although it seems to be a little backwards in terms of the the green and the red. Yeah, um, I don't. It's out of, It's the wrong way around, isn't it? It's like the yes is bigger, yeah. but the red's bigger. It's right. Exactly. It's confusing. It's just so, totally confusing. Aside from it being a donut chart, but you know, it just looks so like they've got it wrong. You're so not what's a your fan of the donut charts? All right, so moving right along, uh, messaging problems are also a common issue with uh, poorly designed dashboards. Uh, for example, this Venn diagram. We're not sure if it's a Venn diagram, but if it is a Venn diagram, they they perhaps were not aware that they were. You know, making making a fool of themselves. It's a fail. <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, not fail. a lot of uh, exactly utter utter fail. So you know, for something like this, I don't know what what advice you would have for this person other than uh, maybe to learn some you know principles on what is a Venn diagram and what is you know what is the message we're trying to convey. And I, I think that's probably pretty fundamental to any dashboard design, right? What what is the message you're trying to convey? And then yeah, well, on, does on, it the, right? on the positive, they got the color scheme right. So yes, that's exactly. Right. That's good, good colors. There's that. There's that. Good natural. There colors. you go. Congratulations, Thomson Reuters. All right, and and I I know we've talked about um, 3D a little bit, but I I, I want to hear it straight from the expert, Minda. How badly do you hate 3D? It's just a big no. I mean, we were at the summit. We said to Microsoft, "Can you just take all of those features out?" Just stop people doing it. Right? Did did anybody suggest that? Is that can you? Yeah, guys yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Um, well, they asked and, for it. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. They they did. They, I think they're getting better, but um, you know, I get their predicament because people love pie charts. They think that it's not a dashboard unless it's got a pie chart in it. You right. know, and people are trying to please their boss who doesn't know any better. So. I I think you know if they buried them so they were really hard to find then that would be a start. But yeah, three days just it completely distorts the message and yeah, it, that just right. explains it all. I actually wrote um, a blog post where I asked people to answer three questions from a pie chart and it wasn't even a 3D one. <laughs> and I asked them to time how long it took them to answer those questions and I asked them the same three questions from the same data but in a bar chart and I said how long did that take? And um, I think that's a good test for those people struggling to convince their boss that pie oh. charts are rubbish, particularly yeah, 3D. Now, it's interesting you said uh, you know these are some of the things that potentially should be taken out of Excel. There's been quite a few blog posts recently about things that should be added to Excel. You know, I think uh, uh, Chris Macro wrote, wrote one recently. There's been a few others, but I could almost see a segment of things you should take out. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah. there's pie they charts. Need to yeah, you know, Clippy, Clippy's gone. You know, it'd be like to be a whole slew of things. Just get rid of these things, and pie charts is right. certainly on it. Well, uh, certainly the three D ones. I don't know. There could yeah, be yeah. there could be an uprising if they got rid of pie charts altogether. So, <laughs> but, all right. Um, so speaking of three D, this one was pretty terrible. But I have to talk about the the gauges. Is that what those things are called? What is the problem with gauges? Nobody I know likes them. 
yet I see them in, in dashboards still. So what what is the deal with that? What do you think? They just hog a lot of space. I think that's right. the main problem. They're taking up a lot of space. Often they don't have the target which they have in that particular one, but you can achieve the same results in um, a bullet graph or bullet chart and right. actually have multiple bullet graphs stacked so that you can compare those different gauges because often you'll see three or four gauges together um, but you can't right. really compare them because they're round and awkward but right. yeah, they're just not the best. I gotta and tell you, these, these are these are almost identical to to the pie charts, or the 3D pie charts, ten years ago. Uh -huh. I mean, when dashboards right. first came out, when I was first building dashboards ten plus years ago or so, it's, it was the thing. You have the gauges on it, and that's how you described it to executives. Oh, they want the dashboard. You think a dashboard in your car. You think the gauges and everything else. So, I, so I get it. But this is just something that is it, one of the things that uh, Minda was talking about earlier. That there comes a point where design principles kind of take over and there ends up being some structure in place and you realize, wow, this just really doesn't give me enough information right. for, how much, right. for how much room it takes up. Right. It, it's, it's time is gone. It's time is so gone and particularly imagine trying to read this thing on a, on a smaller device, you know. Everybody wants their dashboards mobile and you know, try to read this on a small screen um, is, I don't know if it's worse than trying to read it on your computer screen, but anyway, the message here is don't, don't do the gauge thing. So Jordan, you just put out a, you just put out a book on, on dashboards. What do you think about gauges? Uh, I don't like them um, for all the reasons mentioned. I mean, they take up a lot of space, particularly in Excel. I mean, if you want to get a gauge in Excel, it's not even, it's not worth it. It's a lot of work to get there. Um, right. You're really just you're just putting in something that kind of sizzles and that's flashy, but that doesn't really amount to a whole lot. Right. And that's and that's really I mean it's like what you said. It's every uh, executive. I remember the first dashboard I saw had those gauges on them, and I thought, boy, that's so cool. Um, Me too. Until I, I was like, woo. I, yeah, I was like, <laughs> how hey, long do I, like I build that? that? <laughs> right. And right. Until until you like start using them and you're like, ah, oh, I don't even understand what I'm I'm looking at here. Right. So so the moral of the story is. Don't do it just because you can, is I think a, a good takeaway yeah. here. But, but, but with that said, they're still being done. So I, I put these um, images in here because these are, they are more modern in the sense that they're all you know online dashboards and you know you've got the you've got more white space. But yet, notice that they all kind of. Um, have some of these these faux pas that we've been talking about. So what is the deal with these modern dashboards that still are using things like, you know, the distorted? It's not really 3D, but what do you call this when it's sort of like the perspective? Yeah, yeah, yeah the perspective, like the distorted perspectives. And you know, we just talked about the gauges, and and um, so they're still being used. So why is there such a lack of uh, kind of dashboard common sense out there in the modern world. You know, we, we, we kind of poke fun at the old-fashioned stuff because it's old-fashioned, but as you can see here, it's still happening. So is it just that not enough people have signed up for Minda's course, or what's going on here? Um, the designers of this work are usually programmers or, you know, mm. some visionary type okay. or, you know, some VP somewhere who thinks, so they don't really They've not taken the time to look at the visualization research, but they have right. looked at what has sold and uh, yeah, these sell. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say two things. One is that or they're technicians, and they're doing what they think pe people want to see. And number two, often if you're pulling images off the Internet like this, it's, it's sales collateral. Mm -hmm. And salespeople are building things that they think executives want to see, so they're building things right. that are kind of flashy and right. you know, whether they're so, useful or not yeah. doesn't, make, doesn't really matter. Well, thank you for that. Um, it's been another exciting episode of Dashboard Rescue. Minda, we appreciate your thoughts. Thank you.